Man, what's up, good people? It's your boy, Billy Mac, back for another episode of the Boys Only Podcast, where we talk about Cowboys, news, and wins, and losses. And Anyway, let's get the elephant out the room. Tyron Smith is probably not going to play this season. At the earliest, he might be back in December, and we're not even... Taking into account rehab, um, <laughs> we don't know how much strength. He's not going to be able to do any leg work, so we don't know how much strength he might lose in that leg. Um, and and let, let's just be real about this. Tyron Smith didn't look good against the, um, the 49ers in that playoff game. He did not look good. So, And there were reports coming out of training camp that he um he wasn't he didn't he just didn't look as good as he's looked in past years but if but during an interview he said this is the best he's ever felt so i don't know what to tell y'all but i mean you know and and for those that don't know man y'all have got to listen to um, 105.3 The Fan. You've got to listen to 105.3 The Fan because they're dropping nuggets on a daily basis. So, per Brian Broaddus, Dallas Cowboys, uh, former scout, former scout for the Green Bay Packers, Super Bowl winning scout for the Green Bay Packers, and current host of the G-Bag, one of the hosts of the G-Bag Nation, from two to six or two to seven each and every day on 105.3 The Fan. Yeah, I got to I gotta put it out there. Per Brian Broaddus, okay, the best available left tackle out there right now is Jason Peters. Now, I know some of y'all were thinking Eric Fisher. Um, there was another name. What's... Um, Nick Solder, Nate Solder from the Giants. I feel like there was one more name. But the reason the Cowboys might not go after these guys. Oh, Andrew Whitworth trying to trying to bring him out of uh, retirement, the former left tackle for the uh, for the Rams. And basically, from what I heard, Andrew Whitworth doesn't mind coming back to play football. The issue is it's his he he basically said it's his family's decision. Like it is literally his fan. If his family says he can go play football, he'll come play football. Um, but right as of writing the way it's looking, his family is like, no, you're staying home. <laughs> so um, so like I said earlier, the other or only option, the only other option. Um, that is available is um um what's my man Jason Peters. Uh, Jason Peters is forty years old, but Jason Peters is apparently the only one that still has enough in the tank to play. They're saying guys like Eric Fisher and Nate Solder, they're at they're, like they're they're to the end. Like you only sign them if you need depth on the offensive line. Personally, what I would do, um, and I'll get in, I'll get into this when we talk about the Seattle game. I would bring, I would bring Jason Peters and um, Nate Solder in. Maybe if if Ty and Sicky is still out there, I would bring Ty and Sicky in. I would I just I need depth on the offensive line. I need depth on the offensive line. Um and and granted, for those of you that did watch the Seattle game, and I understand it was against second, third, and even fourth string guys, Matt Luesco played very well. He played very well. So you know how much develop how much more development does he need? I don't know. I know the big issue 
The big issue with Matt Luesco is he has a subjugation of the shoulder. Long, long story short, that means his shoulder just keeps popping out of place very easily. And and they've been working with it to make sure it doesn't do it as often. But from my experience, and when I say my experience, I just mean I don't mean I've I've never had a separated shoulder. I'm when I say from my experience, I mean I'm just saying from seeing other football players have this same type of injury, it I, I unless modern medicine has just gotten that much better, it's all this is always going to be a problem throughout his career. It's always going to be a problem. It's always going to keep popping out, and it's never it's never it, it's never going to get worse. But it's never going to get better if you if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah. So just keep in mind that um, I, 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 Matt Lewesco played very well, but I don't think he's going to be able to do enough to win um, to win the starting job. Hopefully, we can keep him on the practice squad. This, that, and the other. But. Um, the tackle situation is bad, ladies and gentlemen. It's very, 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 very bad. And if we can't find some type of help or some type of consistency, you know, they say with the offensive line, the um, they say with the offensive line, the offensive line is only as strong as your weak, weakest link. Well, as of right now, we have four weak links on the offensive line. So. Um, so with that said, let's talk about the Seattle game. Good win. Um, Brett Maher kicked very well. Will Greer played very well. Now, the only thing about that, I wonder if there are two reasons I wonder about this. It will, there's only one reason I wonder about it, but the issue at hand is why do we um why did what you call it I literally just lost my train of thought okay why did Cooper Rush only play one series now maybe now my thoughts on this is either one Cooper Rush is the backup quarterback Period. Or, if you all remember, Will Greer, Will Greer, um, turn my mic down a little bit. Will, Will Greer had a groin injury with the very first preseason game. So he really didn't even get to play. He never got to play in that game. So maybe they were looking at it like, let's give both of them a fair opportunity because believe it or not, that is that the backup quarterback job is on the line. Um, and as of maybe an hour ago, 30 minutes to an hour ago, Adam Schefter tweeted that Ben DiNucci is getting released, which means I which means we're going to. We're going to keep both quarterbacks. I think Will Greer will make the roster, but Cooper Rush will be the practice squad quarterback. Because you got to have a practice squad quarterback. You just you just you always got to have quarterbacks, even though having a starting quarterback is the, the most, is like the hottest commodity you can have. Um, You still got to have a... You got to have somewhat of a, um, I guess you can say, you got to have somewhat of a, an insurance policy when it comes to quarterback. You always need to have a quarterback on hand. Because if you remember, during 2020, the Denver Broncos had to play a game with a wide receiver at quarterback, and the NFL did not care. So you got to have a backup quarterback. So with Ben DiNucci getting released, my thought is that um my thought is that 
Will Greer will make the roster, but Cooper Rush will be on the practice squad. And the reason I believe that is because Will Greer is a proven, technically he's a proven quarterback. Um, He started for Carolina uh, um, a while when he first got into the league. And I think he would, and here's the thing about the practice squad that a lot of people don't know. Other teams can look at your practice squad and be like, oh, we want that guy. And literally go sign them. And you as a team, you have the opportunity to add add the player to your team. That's what happened with. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so funny because he was supposed to be this great tight end, but he ended up getting super injured and was never the same. Um, golly. Y'all have to forgive me. I got to look up his name. Um, I got to look up his name. Former Dallas Cowboy. Tight ends. Oh, let me just look up Dallas Cowboy roster 2020. Because I know he was on the league. I know he was on the team in 2020. Uh, Here we go. Tight ends. Blake Jarwin. Blake Jarwin. For those of you who don't know, Blake Jarwin almost got picked up from the um from the Philadelphia Eagles. And Dallas ended up signing him to the team. And he wasn't even like he was just a um what you call it? He was a regular tight end. He wasn't even he was just he was like third string at the time cuz I think Jason Witten was still on the team. Uh, when when that happened, Jason Witten was still on the team because uh, I was either 18 or 19 when that happened. But yeah, so that's the only thing about the practice squad. Other teams can literally come to your practice squad and take your guys. That's why if you watch my last video, that's why I was saying <sighs> Malik, Mal- Malik Bell and Rico Dattle I don't I would rather keep Malik Bell and hopefully I can put Rico Dado on the practice squad and just hope that nobody takes him because I think a lot of people have seen Malik Bell and a lot of people want him. So. um, So that that's that's um, that's a good thing. Um, And then. um. Listening to 105.3 The Fan, y'all have got to do this. Um, I was listening to the, uh, I was actually getting ready to listen to the game. Um, no, I take that back. I wasn't listening to the game. I was listening to G Bad Nation. And they interviewed Christy Scales, who was a report, sideline reporter for Dallas Cowboys. And she was talking about how the new rules of the practice squad give teams a lot more leeway. You can now add three veterans to the practice squad, which is great. Um, In my last video, I believe I said something along the lines of if guys are, if guys are added to the practice squad, um, a lot of times they aren't. If guys are added to the practice squad, a lot of times, depending on how long they've been in the league, they can't be added to the practice squad. And I couldn't remember if it was like three or four years you had to be in the league to be on the practice squad or something like that. Well, the new one of the new NFL rules is that a team can be added to. Um, you can have three veterans on the practice squad now, which is great, which is great, which gives the Cowboys a whole lot more leeway. Um, Michael Gallup. Even though he's still injured, he's not he's not going to be injured long enough to be placed on the pup list. 
Um, I think James Washington would be placed on the pup list. I think um, somebody else that's injured. Let me see who's going to who's going to be on the team. Um, Dallas Cowboys. Um, there's there's two. There's another guy I believe that's going to be on the team. Dang, I didn't even know uh, Israel McQuan. I knew Kelvin Joseph got injured. injured. I didn't know McQuan got injured, too. Um, and I heard Isaac Taylor Stewart. I don't think he's going to make the team, though. I think hopefully he it, – depend, if, if depending on how severe that ankle injury is, um, if the Cowboys really like him, I think he's a decent player. If the Cowboys really like him, they're either going to put him on the pup list or just go ahead and put him on injured reserve. And he'll just, it's like, try again next, next year, young man. Try again next year. Oh, I, I, Isaac Alarcon got injured. I didn't know that. Um, uh, Aaron Samplin, Samplin. He, I mean, I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna make the team anyway. So, because he's running back, he's number five on the running back depth chart. Uh, Israel McQuamu has a groin. Oh yes, yeah. so he's on the team. You got a aggravated a groin injury. Okay, it's just a groin. It's just a groin. So, so he'll probably be back. Um. So uh, that's. That's the most um, updated uh, injury list. That's the most updated injury list. Um, of course, Tyron Smith. And then Tyler Smith has his ankle, but he's definitely on the team. He, he's definitely on the team. Um, yeah, as of right now. As of right now, those are the um, those are the biggest in injuries. Um, so Kelvin Joseph, Kelvin Joseph, Tyler Smith, Tyron Smith, um, Michael Gallup, Isaac Taylor Stewart, Israel McQuamu. Those those are your injuries as of right now. So I think personally. Um, and Kelvin Joseph has a concussion. So depending on how severe his concussion is, um, the good thing is he didn't, you know, it was a home game, so he didn't have to get on a plane or anything like that. So that helps with his recovery. Um, and, you know, concussions, it's, it's give or take. Some, sometimes you can come back and it, it, you just need a week. Other times you need like four, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's kind of up in the air. And then not to mention, Kelvin Joseph has not played well. As I said in my last video, he's not played well. And there, there is a legitimate chance um, that he might not actually make the team, which is wild. Wild. Man, I got stuff on my face. Um, yeah, there's a legitimate chance he might not, not, not actually make a team. Me personally, I drafted you in the second round. You're playing out your unless you just playing that bad. Like you're like you're helping us lose games bad. Even then, I'm probably just gonna lower you on the depth chart. Or 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 I don't know if that's possible in the NFL. I think they they need to implement this. Um, drop you like in the MLB, kind of drop you down to the practice squad until you can get your life together, and then I might bring you back up. Um, but that it is what it is with that. Um, I know I ain't even talked about the game. It was a good win, good win in Seattle. Like nice comeback win in Seattle. And um, Will Greer played very well, I believe. Um, that's why I think he'll be, I think he'll be the starter. I think he'll be the starting second string quarterback. And then um, 
Cooper Rush will go to the practice squad. As far as anything else I noticed, I th- defense is still making turnovers. So, Dan, whatever Dan Quinn is doing is contagious with this team. So, I do believe, I don't know if we'll be as dynamically, um, I don't know if we'll be as dynamically aggressive as we were last year when it came to turnovers, but I think we're going to get turnovers on a, a consistent basis, if you will. Um, and th- that's rare. That's rare for the Dallas Cowboys. I remember, you know, when when Wade, where it was Wade Phillips, Rob Ryan, even the Dan Campo days, even the Bill. I don't know. I don't remember us getting that many tones. I feel like we got enough. We got turnover. We got the turnovers that we needed with Parcells, but I didn't. I haven't felt. I, I haven't felt like we've been like. Like, I think the Cowboys can average maybe two turnovers a game, which is good. It doesn't seem like much. That is good, ladies and gentlemen. Two turnovers a game, technically, technically what you want from turnovers is, you know, you get turnovers and you turn them into points. That's technically what you want. Um, So two turnovers a game you mess around and turn those into touchdowns, that's an extra 14 points a game. And the NFL average, I think, is 23 touchdowns. So if you can average three touchdowns a game, your your probability of winning goes up exponentially. So just adding 14 points a game, the average NFL game, each team gets about maybe 10, um, 8 to 10 possessions. Um. You know, depending on if a team runs the ball or not. But I think the NFL average is like eight to ten possessions a game. In fact, let's look it up. Hey, Google. (laughs) Average. Average possessions per game. NFL. Uh, Okay, so. Really, really Google. So Google just answered it. I don't know if y'all heard that. But uh, (laughs) Google says uh, each team averages 12 possessions. So that's that's what it's for. So that's three possessions per quarter, give or take. Um. So, yeah, that's three possessions per quarter, give or take. So if you take in, so out of three possessions, what you hope, you hope to score on each possession. That's what you hope for. Um, Twelve possessions a game, you hope to score on every possession. Um, At least you try to score on half of them. So 42 points would be nice. Um. But I think what ends up happening, you only score on a third of them. That's why the NFL average is only like 20 some points. Um, in fact, let's let's look that up. Um, 22, 22.8 points. 22, 22.8 points. And Dallas, actually last year, Dallas averaged 30.4 points. 34, 30.4 points a game. So, and that is actually a good indicator of which team is going to do well in the playoffs too. So, it just is what it is. It just is what it is. So, very good win. Very, very, very good win in um, Seattle. A lot of you guys, I know it's just preseason, but for for these NFL players, that's their last chance to make an NFL team. That's their last chance to make an NFL team. So we can't knock, um, can't knock these guys for trying hard. You know what I mean? For trying to, um, you know. can't knock these guys for trying to um, fight hard and play hard and um, 
yeah, man. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, all right. So I got the current roster up. Let's, let's look. I'm going to give you all, I'm going to give you all who I believe. I'm going to do a print screen on this. Um, let me open up paint. In fact, in fact, I think, I think what I am going to do, I think what I am going to do is let's do, let's do a screen in screen. So just give me a second. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a. Uh, this is the roster. I, obviously, it, for those of you that don't know, I got this from Wikipedia. Um, this is going to be the easiest way to. Uh, it's going to be the easiest way to uh, do this. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and just get rid of the ones that that I just believe they're not here. So Ben Danucci, you are gone. Uh, let's do something else. Uh, is that a marker? Change the size on it. Why do you see, man? I know y'all, I should have did this earlier. Okay. Anyway, okay, this is gonna have to do. All right. So Ben Danucci is gone. Um, Aaron Samplin, you sir are gone. The Ontario Drummond, you are gone. TJ Vasher. You are gone. Um, I think they're going to keep all th all four tight ends. I think two they might take one of them. One of them will go to the practice squad, but I think they're going to keep all four tight ends. This is okay. So here's the tough part. Here is the tough part. I ain't even heard of James Embry, so I think he's gone. Um, I think Avante Collins. He's a rookie. I think I think they might take him to the practice squad. Braylon Jones, I'm sorry, you're gone. Amon Simon, I'm sorry, you're gone. All right, I think the I think these are the guys that'll stay on the team. Dorrance Armstrong, Terrell Basham, Quentin Bohannon, Josiah Bronson. He's been playing well. He's been playing well, so he might stay. Marcavius Bryant, I didn't even know you were still on the team. Dante Fowler, Neville, Chauncey, Tristan, Odigi Zua, Ridgeway, Mike Tafua, you're done. Uh, Carlos Watkins, Sam Williams, linebackers, Anthony Barger, Real Cons, Luke Gifford, Devin Harbour, Story Jackson, Malik Jefferson, Michael Parkinson. The only one that's a maybe is Malik Jefferson, and he was actually a free agent signing. So that's gonna be that's gonna be crazy difficult. Um Marquise Bell, Deron Bland, Anthony Brown, Tyler Coyle. I think Tyler Coyle, you're the odd man out because we just don't have any room to keep anybody else. Um, Trevon did C.J. Goodwin. I think he's done. I think C.J. Goodwin is done. Lee Hooker, Kelvin Joseph, J. Ron Curse, Israel McCormu, Jordan Lewis, Isaac Taylor Johnson, John... Wanye Thomas. Wanye's actually been playing good. He might be a practice squad guy. He might be a practice squad guy. Donovan Wilson, Nation Wright, Brian Anger, Brett Maher, and Jake McClade is the long snapper. Clearly, this is more than 53. <laughs> uh, let's see where we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 20, 
33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We have currently 69 players. So, so now let's let's highlight. We're gonna highlight the ones in yellow that I believe are going to be practice squad guys. Okay. All right. So, like I said, um, I think Will Greer is going to be on the team. So Cooper Rush is a practice squad guy. Let me uh can a brother like okay let's 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 okay there we go okay so I think Cooper Rush Cooper Rush is definitely going to practice squad I think Rico Daddle will be practice squad okay Brandon Smith is definitely part of the squad. Um, James Washington, let me let me put him in purple. James Washington is going to be a um, he's going to be the um, what's that thing called? He's going to be on the pup list because he's injured. He's injured. So, um, Sean McEwen, practice squad. Uh, okay, Isaac Alarcon, he's actually injured too. So, he's practice squad, and I'm using the wrong color. Why, why, uh, Sean McEwen, Isaac Alarcon. Okay, Josh Ball. I think Avante Collins is practice squad. Alec Lindstrom, practice squad. Um, Farniak, because Farniak can play guard too and center, I think he'll make the roster. Tyler Smith, Terrence Steele, Matt Walesco. Like I said, I like Walesco and Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith's gone, so they can they can start him. They can start. They can just put him on injured reserve, and he's not going to count towards the roster. Um, so purple, purple for for those purple is injury issues. Yellow, yellow or gold or whatever is practice squad. All right. Um, <laughs> defensive lineman. I'm gonna be okay. If I if I had to if I had to guess, let's go. I'm, I'm gonna go back to black. I, I haven't heard much from Carlos Watkins. So I think Carlos Watkins is gone. Now, to be honest with you, maybe Sam Williams goes to the practice squad, but I think somebody will pick him up. So I think every last one of these guys, maybe Josiah. I'll put Josiah Bronson on on the practice squad because even though he's played well, I don't think he's played well enough that a team is going to come and scoop him up. All right. So linebackers. Luke Gifford, definitely practice squad. Um, Story Jackson, definitely practice squad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and release Malik Jefferson. I'm going to go ahead and release Malik Jefferson. Uh, and mind you, I forgot, I didn't even add. So technically, we had a roster of 70 because Michael Gallup is going to be on the team. They're going to they're going to add him to the main roster. OK. All right. Defensive backs. Isaac Taylor Stewart. He's going to be I think he's going to be an injury guy. Juan Ye Thomas. Definitely practice squad. Um, Juan Ye Thomas practice squad. Taylor Stewart injury, depending on how severe, I think no, I think he's going to be on the team. I think he's going to be on the team. I think Kelvin Joseph's going to be on the team. 
It's, this is tough, man. I feel sorry for these coaches. All right. I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> so now let's count it out. Let's 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 count it out again. All right. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 10, 14, 5, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. Ladies and gentlemen, I just lowered the Cowboys uh, roster. I just lowered the Cowboys roster. OMG. Now, the only issue is, is how many practice squad guys that you can have. Um, how many practice squad guys that you can have? This is my computer screen is going to look w- really weird, y'all. Um. Just do it to the side. Uh, how many can be on the NFL practice squad? I would notice if I still played Madden. Okay, so you can have 16 players. You can have 16 players. So right now, one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's eleven guys that are going to the practice squad. So maybe a guy like Malik Jefferson. Um, definitely a couple of these um, offensive linemen um, could could be could remain on the practice squad. The, the fact of the matter is this is this is this is good. This is good. Um, this is good. This is really good. So with that said, hey, um, I can't believe I got the roster down. I just knew this was going to be hard. Uh, well, actually, I take that back. I take that back. This guy right here. That's number 53. That's number 53. I forgot about him again. So, so this is good. This is really good. We're going to be able to keep most of these, most of our defensive linemen. That this, the defensive linemen, this is what I was worried about. This right here, I was worried about that. I was worried about that so bad. I was like, I, we're going to have to get rid of some of these guys. I was thinking Tristan Hill and or Terrell Basham would be kind of, uh, Cut casualties kind of guy, but let's, we're looking good. We're looking good. So, but I don't want to waste you all's time any longer. Um, cut day will be tomorrow. I will try my best to put a video out tomorrow, barring if my daughter lets me. <laughs> but, um, uh, and it's gonna be a short video. It's just gonna I'm just gonna see um what the uh what the uh what the final roster is gonna be. Let's um let's react to who gets cut, who doesn't get cut, um, who's on the team, who's not on the team, who's going to the practice squad. Let's talk about it. And that will be it'll be sometime after four o'clock because the rosters have to be completed by four PM Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Uh, that's us for the people on the West Coast. That's why a lot of teams try to have their rosters done by today, Monday. Um, but it is what it is. So until next time, everybody, it's your boy, Billy Mack, and I'll holler at you next time.